Don't look. It's ugly. So a problem getting around the buckets with this new sheet metal is this lip here. Ultimately, I just don't need all of it and I was not able to remove everything that was around that bucket that was this in the first place. So I'm gonna slice off this outer lip. I'm doing it in stages. So first I've cut a bunch of notches so it'll come off in smaller pieces. I'm gonna work my way around with some cutting discs on my grinder and then uh, hopefully be able to put it in. I will be welding along this more front edge lip area around the bucket. I am not concerned about perfection in terms of my welds because there will be the headlight ring that goes around it. So that's what I'm getting to next. Test fitting right now. A little high down there. I cut off maybe a little more than I needed to. Do a teeny bit of trimming there. Some trimming along here, which I was hoping I would have to do. That's good news. Trim a little bit off of that corner. This one will pop in because right now, over here, it's overlapping with the equivalent sheet metal. So I'm going to have to cut a little bit more off there. Creeping up on it. I imagine there will be some gaps, but hopefully not many more like that. All right, time to mark up where I need to cut. All right, well, I've got the sheet metal prepared. Here it is. Uh, I've gone through, I've stripped the paint off of the welding surfaces. I have done some hole punches for the bottom lip section there and for the hold on vertical sides so so uh it's hard to do that while looking at the camera um so i'm ready to put it in and start tack welding it but first i am going to do a little bit more prep on the bus to make sure that its metal is ready and stripped ready to go started welding it and i've made some pretty good progress these clamps are doing a pretty good job of holding the two panels flush. This is not the greatest of metal, so my initial attempt at using gas did not work to my satisfaction. I don't have very much experience with it, so I switched back to flux core. I've had better success at not burning through, getting a good penetration weld that kind of thing. Got my spot welds in. It's nice and solid. Working around the headlight bucket isn't going great. It'll be solid. It's definitely solid now. But I'm gonna have to do some filing and grinding around the edges to make sure that the bezel fits properly. So I'm going to continue on with my stitch welds and go from there. Well, it's better, but it's not great. I'm a little bit frustrated, but I'm trying to work on acceptance of my limitations. So here you can see I've been removing a lot of the braces and uh i got some gaps see here it burns right through any effort to um weld some of this metal is just it's just too thin um hopefully i'll be able to sort of fill in some of these gaps and i don't know keep stitch welding 
I will say the curve is now better. This curve here in the original bus metal is considerably better than it was. You can sort of see it from up top here, I think. So that curve is considerably better than what it was. I will do some filing using an actual file because it generates the least amount of heat. I've got some new flap discs coming that'll be gentle. The key there is don't put pressure on it. You let the disc do the work. Don't really try to lean into it uh, because then you just create too much heat. And I will hopefully be able to refine this shape and Bondo will take care of the rest. I'm hoping that I won't have to go more than about a 16th of an inch on the Bondo. Worst case scenario in some spots, it may be closer to uh, an eighth of an inch um, just for a couple dips or whatever. So anyway, it, it will get there, but I'm recognizing that my welding skills are so lacking that the only way I'm gonna get there is through work after welding. So anyway, back to it. So I just used a Sharpie to paint a mustache on this thing because I'm going to be using that file to get the last bit. I'm gonna to try to avoid the grinder as much as possible. I've been using an 80 grit flap disc and a grinding wheel. What I wanna be able to tell is that when I'm getting close enough on the filing that the weld is basically the same level. There are some waves in this. This is a high spot. Here's a low spot. Um, you can kind of see there, it's sunk in there. That was already there. Uh, if you remember, this thing was quite the potato chip to start. So my fix wasn't much of one, but so it goes. Um, in the end, it looks better. <laughs> than what it did, so uh, I'll take it. So I'm gonna use the hand file, get down low towards uh, where I start to hit some of the sheet metal, and then I'm gonna be able to figure out where the weld is actually sunk in, and a little bit of Bondo will fill it in over the top or where I have to go smooth uh, all the way flush with the sheet metal. So we're working on that now. Feeling pretty good. I'm hoping I'll be able to hide it and I am gonna to have to learn some weathering techniques so that I can uh, mimic some of the rust stains on the rest of the bus on the nose. This thing is not gonna be pristine. I just have to get an orange that's real damn close and then I'm gonna weather it so that it looks old and beat up when it is not. That should be interesting, but that's much farther down the road than now. First layer of Bondo is on. It is entirely coated. Didn't do around the buckets yet, but I will. Um, my approach typically, uh, when I'm doing these things, what I typically do, I, I, when I did my Beetle, when I did my little uh, Willie's Jeep, when I used to have a, had a Grand Wagoneer, uh, I get it close with the initial pass of grinder, flap disc, metal file, and when I feel like I'm about there uh, and I just can't tell anymore, I then do a Bondo coat. And I'm gonna sand the Bondo down using an orbital sander. And when I'm done with that, I can then give it a spray coat of primer. Probably up to about here, just the whole face primered. And that'll give me a sense of where does the line show through? Uh, where are the dents that don't really go away like I wanted them to, or the the uh, the ripples, the potato chip, uh, as I call it. Uh, and then I sand it back. I go down to bare metal in areas that need it. I do a little bit more sanding, grinding, filing, whatever. Add a bit more Bondo, do another layer, and I kind of work at it that way. Um, I'm pretty happy with the results when I do it that way. So... It's what I'm gonna stick with. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense. I'm not saying do it my way. I'm just saying this is the way I do it. So up next is some sanding. All right, time to get uh, sanding on this Bondo. Uh, I'm taking a break from the welding. I'm a little 
irritated with how it's coming around the uh, how it's coming out around the headlight bucket. Just don't like it. Um, it's on there solid, but I don't know. Uh, in order to cut the nose panel to splice in around the bucket, I left two large gaps. Now I just got to fill those in. I'm going to spend hours grinding and re-welding, and I just don't want to do it right now. So I am focused on that. I am going to be using a sanding block with 120 grit paper uh, and just kind of get it down to a good level and uh, see where the where the potato chip is. So let's get to it. First sanding pass, low spot, low spot, low spot. Um, not perfect, but I'll take it so far. So I'm going to do another layer, thin coat, probably a little thicker here, but not much. I'm not trying. There's a pretty big dent. This section of sheet metal was really sucked in. I could only get it to pop out so much. The strength of this, it was just being pulled in. I'm okay with that. At some point, when the previous guy did his welding, he put so much heat into it that it just warped it badly, and I got to take what I got. So maybe I should have replaced the whole nose, but welding around that, I mean, up and down, just more than I wanted to do. So more Bondo, another layer, then I'm going to go back to doing the buckets. We'll see how that goes. Don't look. It's ugly. Forgive the shadows. Another pass with a layer of Bondo. I'm liking this a lot better. It's still going to have a bit of a wave in a few spots, but I'm cool with that. I will have to put another layer of Bondo there and there to get rid of some slight imperfections in the line. But... Overall, I'm pretty pleased. I also have passed what I refer to as the magnet test. So this is the spot where the Bondo is the thickest. Magnet still sticks, so it's not so thick that it can't reach. And these, you know, yes, it's thick enough where this thing doesn't work perfectly, but it gets through and uh, there is metal under there. On my little Jeep, there was one section that had a half-inch thick layer of Bondo, no joke. So uh, at least I'm not doing that.